Hello friends, welcome back to your favorite YouTube channel, Life from Mars. Yes, I am Marissa, of course, but you can call me Mars. I am so excited to have you guys back today because we are going to be talking about something a little bit creepy. <gasps> yes, if you guys know me, you know that I love the strange paranormal facets of this planet. I love mysteries. I love things that sort of lack rational explanation. And so today's topic is definitely one of those things. Today, we are going to be talking about the Philip experiment and asking ourselves a real question. Can you create a ghost with your mind? Yes, guys, so this is an insane experiment that was done that sort of honestly creates more questions than answers and really starts to push the boundaries of what we think is possible in our physical reality. Before I get into the story, I just want to say to make sure that you do subscribe if you are not already subscribed. I so appreciate everyone who watches my videos. I make videos about all sorts of things, not just paranormal. So make sure that you subscribe so you can see all my new videos. I post every single Friday and sometimes some other videos in between. Some of you also might have noticed my lovely shirt here that I am wearing. It is actually a blown up version of the stickers that I had done. They were illustrated by my amazing friend Jenna. You can follow her on Instagram. I'll put her Instagram to her account and her art account down below so you guys can see them but um she did this beautiful design for me just save light from mars and then my friend liz from my videos lizard princess she and her lovely fiance actually printed them for me so i'm so excited i officially have light from mars shirts guys i have merch i'm going to be doing a giveaway with some of my merch by the way probably next video next week so stay tuned for that and if you guys want a shirt please dm me i think that i am going to be selling a limited amount so if you want a shirt if you want to support me i would absolutely love Love you so thank you so much so all of that being said let's get into the juicy paranormal spooky content that I know you're all here for so like I said today we are going to be talking about something called the Philip experiment the Philip experiment was a parapsychology experiment conducted in Toronto Canada in 1972 the purpose of the experiment was to see if human subjects can communicate with fictionalized ghosts through expectations of human will it was headed by the Toronto Society for Psychical Research and directed by Dr. A. R. Bowen, who also happened to be a poltergeist expert. Now the real purpose of the experiment was to explore the ancient Tibetan belief of tulpas. Now this is where it starts to get crazy. The direct translation of tulpas can be known to mean thought forms. A tulpa was the practice of willing a physical entity into existence using only mental human energies. In other words, it was the idea that we could will something up with our own human mind and energies into the physical world, something that did not otherwise exist or didn't exist beforehand, a direct projection of our thoughts and ideas. They were looking to test the idea. Can a human being create a ghost? The test subjects consisted of a random group of eight men and women. All of these people had different occupations and were completely different from one another. And most importantly, nobody in the experiment except Dr. Owen had any sort of paranormal background or association with paranormal or supernatural anything. These were just totally normal people, eight normal men and women. So in trying to create a ghost, they had to write the biography of the ghost they were trying to create. This ghost, of course, came to be known as Philip. Philip Aylesford. They gave Philip an entire life story. They gave him likes and dislikes, favorite things. They gave him actual events that supposedly happened to him. And they even described the chain of events that eventually led to his own suicide and thus him becoming a ghost. Philip Alisford, as they wrote, lived in the 1600s and was a Catholic English aristocrat. He was well off and lived at a place called Diddington Manor. He lived there with his wife Dorothea, who was described as beautiful but cold. While out riding one day, Philip came upon a gypsy encampment. It was there that he met a gypsy named Margot, and they fell madly in love. So in love, in fact, that Philip actually allowed Margot to live in his gatehouse at his estate. Well, as I'm sure you can guess, this is where things started to get a little bit messy. 
Dorothea eventually found out about Margot and accused her of witchcraft. Essentially, she was saying that Margot was able to get Philip to fall in love with her because she was casting spells on him and literally forced him by using witchcraft. Philip was terrified and too afraid to risk his reputation and so he did not speak up. He did not defend Margot and he let everyone think that this was the truth and he let her be accused of witchcraft. For this, Margot was eventually burned at the stake. Philip eventually became extremely depressed, burdened by his lost love and by the immense guilt of not speaking up and saving her. This eventually led to him committing suicide. That was the autobiography that they wrote for Philip Alisford. The subjects even drew pictures of Philip, described exactly what he would look like, and visualized them in their own minds, meditating on him and watching him live his life. The experiment went on like this, and for about a year, nothing really happened. Finally, the researchers were becoming frustrated that nothing was happening, and so they decided that maybe it would be best if they changed their approach. They decided that they would start conducting seances. Now, the participants would sit around a table and all attempt to contact and conjure the spirit of Philip Alisford. Things started escalating quickly from here. First, an unknown force would start to tap on top of the table. They told Philip to knock once for true and twice for false, and they were shocked by what started to happen. We weren't at that stage thinking that we were talking to the table. We were surprised when suddenly one night we heard a rap from the table, quite a loud rap, and we thought, you know, what is this? And we sat there very much surprised, and I think it was Dorothy said, well, Perhaps it's Philip. And immediately there was another rap. This unknown entity, this force, Philip, whatever it was, it started answering their questions about Philip's past completely accurately. It was like this spirit actually did have the memory of the things that they had described. Oh. Philip, did you like Dorothy? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 Margot. Margo. Oh, yeah. Yes. Say it again. Did you love Margo? They would ask it, did this happen to you? Is this what happened to you then? Did this happen to you in this particular year? No matter what they asked the spirit, it seemed to always get the questions right. In fact, this entity actually started revealing things about Philip's past that they had never even included in the autobiography. It started describing events and filling in gaps that they had not even written. And these events not only lined up with Philip's biography that they wrote, but also was eerily accurate to the time period and historical events during Philip's supposed life. From here, Philip, or whatever spirit or entity or energy was conjuring itself as Philip, started to develop its own type of personality. It would flicker the lights, there would be unexplainable noises, and eventually the table actually started to levitate. <laughs> Naturally, all of the researchers and participants were super sucked into this experiment. It went on for quite some time, and they even eventually opened up the seances to the public. It's just crazy. Eventually, the experiment came to an end, but that did not leave researchers with any more answers than they originally started with. In fact, it left them with more questions. They understood that they had contacted something. They understood that something was knocking on the table and that something was answering their questions and that something was levitating things and flickering lights and making all of these noises. They knew that there was some energy in that room with them. But what was it? I mean, did they really create Philip Alsford? I mean, did they just want him to be real so badly and all of their collective mind energy made it work? Does that mean that tulpas and the idea of thought forms and that we can create entities into the physical world with our mind, does that mean that that's real? Is it just an odd form of confirmation bias? Are all of these people just somehow making this happen because they want to believe in it? Is that even possible? Some people have said that it's just the extreme power of suggestion, but that still does not explain how all of these things started happening. I mean, some have even suggested that these people may have been hallucinating, but that 
also does not explain all of the recorded versions of it and the fact that this was actually witnessed by other people several times and other people also attested to be witnessing these things. Of course, there's also the question to whether this was an actual spirit. Did they somehow tap into a parallel universe where Philip Ausford really lived? Or maybe even, was this actually a real person who lived and they somehow tapped into his timeline and remembered what really happened to him? Is that possible? I don't know guys, I honestly don't know and even just thinking about this experiment it really does make my mind just wander and I really, I, I just, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think that they really created a spirit? Do you think that it was maybe another entity that they contacted that was posing as Philip? Do you think that they conjured another ghost from another dimension where Philip was real? I mean. I just don't know. I honestly don't know, guys, but I would love to hear what you guys think. What is your theory about this crazy phenomena? I highly suggest that you look more into it because this really is just a crazy experiment and one of those things that just really makes you wonder, like, what is going on in our world and what is really possible? I will tell you guys that I have heard other examples of this sort of idea of the tulpa, of the creating of something with your own mind, and honestly, I'm starting to really, really, really believe that it's completely possible. So what do you guys think? I want to know. And if you guys have any other topics that are similar to this, weird kind of paranormal topics or events or things like that, I would love to know. Please comment below and let me know. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is a super crazy topic and honestly, I just find it to be so interesting because it just so proves that we really don't understand how this world actually completely works and that the world is a lot more than just what we think in our physical reality. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to give it a big like if you did like it. Share it with your friends to see what they think about this crazy story. If you would like a shirt, you can contact me on my Instagram at Life from Mars. While you're there, please give me a follow if you're not already. I will have these shirts for sale if you guys want to contact me. I'm going to be getting more printed. And of course, like I said, I'm also going to be doing a giveaway in next week's video. So make sure you tune in for that and I'm going to be posting that on my Instagram as well. I hope you have an absolutely lovely rest of your day. Don't forget to catch up on all my other videos before you catch the next one. Sending you guys tons of love and good energy and I will see you on the next one. Bye!